Recording in progress. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Empowering the Workforce, a panel discussion on decent work and economic growth. I am Bobby Chasper Elabini, your host for this evening. As we gather here tonight, let us recognize the importance of decent work and economic growth. These two concepts are inextricably linked as decent work is essential for economic growth and economic growth is necessary to create decent work. Our purpose here tonight is to explore the challenge and opportunities of promoting decent work and economic growth and identify a practical solution to help us achieve these goals. We've assembled a diverse panel of experts, each bringing unique insight. Their collective wisdom will guide us through the intricate landscape of this and work and economic growth, touching on topics such as job creation, labor rights, social protection, and and the role of technology in shaping the future of work. I want to introduce our speaker and panelists for today. For our speaker, we have Mr. Daniel Edward Quinto, and for our panelists, Mr. Mark Joshua Meniosa, Mr. Erickson Trono, Mr. Sean Vincent Soriano, and Mr. Patrick Ramos. But this is not one-way dialogue. Your thoughts, question, and reflection are crucial. Throughout our discussion, feel free to engage with us. We're not just exploring ideas, but through creating a narrative that resonates with the shared aspiration for a more just equal world. As we delve into tonight's discussion, let closer respect empathy and open-mindedness we may challenge perspective but our goal is to build a bridge of understanding that lead us toward a future where decent work and economic growth are accessible to all before we begin i want to thank each of you for being here your presence signifies a commitment to progress and acknowledgement the change starts with conversation like the one we're about to have. I want to call our speaker, Mr. Mr. Daniel Edward Ginto, for today's... Thank you for having me in today's discussion. Empowering the workforce isn't just a panel discussion. It's an opportunity to drive meaningful change. As we explore the complexities of decent work and economic growth, remember that our collective actions can reshape the world. So, without further ado, let the discussion begin. To start our discussion, let's look at the current state of decent work and economic growth. How are these two concepts interrelated? And what challenges do we face in promoting them? Um, decent work is essential for economic growth, as it provides workers with the tools and resources they need to be productive and contribute to the economy. Uh, however, many workers around the world still face exploitation, discrimination, and unsafe working conditions, which limit their ability to participate fully in the workforce. Economic growth is often concentrated in certain regions and industry, leaving many workers behind to be most insured that economic growth is inclusive and benefits all members of society, regardless of their backgrounds or circumstances. Let's now look at social protection and the future of work. With the rise of automation and artificial intelligence, how can we ensure that the workers are protected and have access to social protection? Investing in infrastructure and innovation is one way to create more jobs. We can create jobs 
and stimulate economic growth by building new roads, bridges, and other infrastructure. Investing in new technologies can also create new job opportunities and increase productivity. But job creation alone is not enough. We also need to ensure that workers are protected and have access to decent working conditions. This includes ensuring that workers are paid a fair wage, have access to health care, and are protected from discrimination and harassment in workplace. Let's now look at social protection and the future of work. With the rise of automation and artificial intelligence, how can we ensure that the workers are protected and have access to social protection? One way to address this challenge is to establish social protection systems that are adaptive and flexible. This means that social protection program should be designed to meet the needs of workers in a rapidly changing labor market. Thank you for your question. Decent work and economic growth are interconnected goals outlined in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals SDGSS. Decent work involves providing fair employment opportunities, promoting social protection, and fostering a conducive work environment. Economic growth on the other hand, aim for sustained and inclusive development. Personal power and responsibility play a crucial role in achieving this goal. An individual contribute to economic growth by persuasive education skill, development, enhancing their employability moreover. Responsible, responsible consumption and ethical businesses practice Contribute to sustainable economic empower. Individual also advocate for workers' right and fair labor practices promoting decent work condition. In incense personal empowerment and responsibility, create a foundation for both decent work and economic growth, fostering a balance and sustainable society. Example Invest in education and training. Support small businesses. Promote per wage and working condition. Foster entrepreneurship. Encourage trade. Invest in infra infrastructure. That's all. Thank you. There are a lot of actions that job seekers can do to get better compensation. But I have three ideas here that could make their life easier and give them insights. Number one, research market salaries. To get a fair idea of what you should be earning, find out the typical salary range for the position you are applying for. You can, you can gather information from online resources, industry salary surveys, and networking. It will help you negotiate a better salary package and avoid underpaying. Number two. Highlight your skills and achievements. Include your skills, experiences, and achievements in your resume and during interviews. Demonstrate how your unique abilities can add to the organization. This will make you stand out from other candidates and increase your chances of getting the job. Lastly, number three, invest in professional development. To remain relevant and valuable, continuous learning and staying informed about industry trends are crucial. Consider acquiring additional certifications or advanced degrees as they can make you a more valuable co candidate and justify a higher salary. This investment in, yours, in yourself will help to grow your career and achieve your long-term goals. Walkouts or riots are usually a result of a collective response to perceived injustice or dissatisfaction with certain conditions. There are some factors that could lead to such actions like unfair treatment. Perceptions of unfair treatment or policies can lead to dissatisfaction among individuals which might escalate to walkouts or riots if not addressed. Next is poor working condition. Inadequate working conditions such as long hours, unsafe environments, or lack of necessary resources can also lead to collective action. Next is 
wage disputes. Disputes over wage, especially if employees feel they are not being compensated fairly, can be a significant factor. Next is lack of communication. Poor communication between management and employees can lead to misunderstanding and frustrations, potentially resulting in walkouts or riots. Lastly, inequality. Perceived or real inequalities such as discrimination or bias can also lead to collective action. That is why it is important to note that these actions are usually a last resort when other avenues of expressing dissatisfaction or effecting change have been exhausted or are not available. They reflected deeper issues that need to be addressed within the organizations or society. Encouraging employees to discuss their salaries publicly can foster transparency and address potential wage gaps within an organization. It promotes fairness by allowing individuals to compare their compensation, ensuring that employees within the similar roles and responsibilities receive equitable pay. Mm, however, some argue that salary discussion should be handled discreetly to avoid potential conflicts or discomfort among colleagues. Striking a balance between transparency and privacy is essential. Considering both organizational culture and potential benefits of open salary conversation in promoting equality and employee satisfaction. As our discussion drew to a close, let's reflect on the insight we've gained and the opportunities ahead. This in work and economic growth are essential for creating more just and equitable world, but achieving this goal will require collective action and commitment to progress. So let us leave this panel discussion with renewed sense of purpose and a call to action. Let us work together to create a world where every individual, regardless of their backgrounds or circumstances, has access to decent work and opportunity to reach their full potential. Thank you for joining us tonight. Recording stopped.